Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we deep dive at some of the important features commonly used by performance testing teams. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. In this video, we will continue our deep dive into the remaining features such as creating and managing dashboards. We will also explore other features that can be used in conjunction with dashboards. So without any further delay, let's get started. So what is a dashboard in a general sense? A dashboard is a visual representation of data in one place, allowing users to make smarter and data to decisions. Every monitoring tool offers various dashboarding capabilities to visualize monitored application or infrastructure data. In this video, we will go through the process of creating and managing dashboards in Dynatrace. So let's open the Dynatrace SaaS environment to learn how to create and manage dashboards. To save some time, I have already logged into Dynatrace SaaS environment. So let me go to the browser. In today's session, we will discuss the important concepts of observe and explore section. Okay, Among them, the dashboard is the one commonly used because every performance system will create a dashboard for their application so that they can quickly monitor the application or infrastructure health. So before we discuss the dashboards, let's quickly go to data explorer first because this is the option that we will be using more while creating the dashboards. So in data explorer, what we can do is we can visualize the data that Dynatrace one agent is monitoring, right? Whether it is the application data or the infrastructure data. So you can create different graphs or charts using data explorer and then you can place them onto the dashboard. So that is why I want to discuss first data explorer and then we will go to the dashboards. Okay. So here in the data explorer, we have an option to choose the type of visualization that we want to use it for our data. Okay. So you can select graph or stacked area pie based on your requirement. You can choose the appropriate one. Okay. Let's leave it as graph and then here we need to specify the metric so dynatrace providing so many metrics right if you want to know more about the metrics you can quickly go to metrics and then here it will list out all the available metrics for us to use it in the data explorer okay for example let's say i'm interested to understand what are all the different cpu related metrics so i can type cpu in the filter then dynatrace will give us the list of the metrics that has the keyword cpu okay so we can use this metric to create a visualization in data explorer you can also go to data explorer from here by expanding this particular metric which will show a default chart when you click the create chart it will take you back to the data explorer okay you can also explore the different metadata of this metric like the name key entity type description to understand more about the metric okay so now let's go back to data explorer here either we can select something from this drop down or you can choose the appropriate entity for example i'm interested to see the metrics related to the host so i can select host then dynatus will list all the different available metrics for host so let's choose the cpu usage and then we can select the aggregation whether we want to leave it auto so the dynatrace will choose the appropriate one or you can choose the, the one you are interested in okay so let's keep it as auto and then split by so how you want to see this metrics you want to see the cpu usage of entire environment or you want to split the cpu usage based on the host generally when we are monitoring different servers we always select split by host okay so that we can get the view of individual host cpu usage select host and then filter by if you have multiple hosts and you are interested in a few specific servers then you can use this filter to filter those servers or you can leave it as is so that it will try to show all the available host cpu usage that you have access to and then if you want to add another metric you can also add that by clicking here and then choose the appropriate metric and fill the rest of the column if you want to delete any metrics you can also click the three dots and then delete it or you can even duplicate it even you can change the order also by dragging and dropping them okay Let's delete this and then click run query. So that will evaluate this metric and show you the data. The time frame that it is showing is 23rd July to 30 July because I have selected last seven days in my time frame filter. Okay. Based on that, it is showing the data. Since we use split by as host, that is why we can see the individual host information. Since in this environment, I only have one host. So that is why it is just showing me the that host information. If I remove the split by host and rerun the query, then so it will show you the CPU says of all the servers as a single metric. So using this metric, it will be a little challenging to understand what is a problematic server, right? So that is why it is always better to use the split by option. Okay. So rerun the query. So we will get the CPU usage of this particular host. So you can understand before the test, how the CPU usage of the server or during the test or after the test. Okay. Even you can change the visualizations after running the query as well. So you can, let's say you want to see the stacked area. 
so then the address will automatically change the visualization okay and if you want to use this in the dashboard you can click pin to dashboard so then the address will add this to the dashboard so when we click the pin to dashboard we will have an option to choose the existing dashboard or you can also create a new dashboard from here okay and then you can also share this link if somebody is interested in this graph then by copying the URL will not open the same graph. So what you need to do is you need to click the share link here. So that will give you a link. If somebody is opening that specific link, Dynatrace will show this graph. Okay. And then you can also export this data to a CSV file or you can even copy the request. And on the right hand side, you have resolution by default it will be selecting as auto you can also change the resolution let's say you want the cpu utilization for every 30 minutes then dynatrace will show the data in such a way and then if you don't want to see the legends then you can also disable this option by default it is enabled so let's disable it now we don't see the any legends right we don't know this is the cpu usage but we don't know which server the cpu usage is so it is always better to use show legend option so that we can see the legend information as well and then you can also change the color of the graph let's say i want to see it in orange so i can choose this and you can also change the unit so it will change the the cpu usage unit as well you can leave it as auto so dynatrace will choose the appropriate unit based on the metric you can also change the format and then right now the usage is showing on y-axis you can position this on the left side or right side by selecting the position so if you select right then usage will be shipped to right okay and you can also specify minimum and maximum value let's say minimum is zero and maximum is 100 percent so then Dynatrace will show those the data based on the minimum and maximum value since the utilization is less than 10 percent that is why the data is getting displayed in this way okay so let's take that minimum and maximum out let's keep it as auto and you can also specify the thresholds let's say you want Dynatrace to show the background in red color when the cpu set goes to beyond certain percentage let's say during the test we don't want the cpu goes beyond 40 percent you can define 40 then what Dynatrace will do is it will add the the red color since the maximum percentage is 18 percent so what we will do is we will change the maximum to 50 then we can see the change so this is the thresholds so if we reach a here then we can easily understand there is some issue with the cpu so you can define the thresholds in the graph that will help you to quickly understand whether the usage is within the given sls or thresholds okay you can also query the data using advanced mode so what you need to do is you just need to enable this advanced mode button so that when enable us to see the current metric that we have selected in an expression okay so you can use these expressions to write complex queries okay so they have very good documentation about how we can use different options to write this kind of complex queries so i will provide you the link in the documentation so if you go to the data explorer advanced mode here they have explained how we can edit the queries how we can select since at the learning stage it is always recommended to use the metrics and then switch it to advanced mode to understand how dynatrace is rewriting the same thing in the query form okay and we also have a plus symbol which will give you additional options so if you click this we can see split by filter by selected you can also use sort by so dynatrace will give you an option to sort the metric and you can also use the limit so by default dynatrace will only show 20 data points if you want more then you can pick and choose this one okay so this is all about the data explorer and if you want to know more about you can go to the documentation by clicking here so you can go through the different sections which are self-explanatory for a practice purpose you can try to visualize different metrics using the data explorer and try different options as well okay so this is all about the data explorer now we will go back to the dashboard so let's click the dashboards by default when we click the dashboards it will show us the dashboard that we have access to either the dashboard that we created or somebody shared with us okay since this is a brand new environment and no dashboards has been created by us we are seeing some dashboard which are with the category preset so preset means dynatrace will create this dashboard and give it to all the users no matter which level of access they have so any dashboard with preset can be seen by the users in that environment so these are all the different 10 dashboards the dynatrace given access to everyone so you can go through the dashboard and then see what different metrics dynatrace has captured in the dashboard and even you can learn different things from those existing dashboards as well so same like other screens we also have a filter option you can use the filters to filter the dashboard that are displaying by default or even you can use the quick filter to filter the dashboards okay and then we have import dashboard options so using this you can import the dashboard created by someone else so they need to export their dashboard in the form of json and then you can take that json file and then import it into your environment so that you don't need to recreate the dashboard again okay so when we click the import dashboard it will ask you the file 
and to create a new dashboard you can click the create new dashboard okay and then for preset dashboards we can only view the dashboard we cannot make any changes so it will not allow us to edit this dashboard if you want to edit this dashboard the best way is you need to clone you need to make a copy of this dashboard then you can do all the changes okay you can also make your dashboards as preset i will show you how to do that so now what we will do is we will try to create a new dashboard so let's click the create dashboard so it will ask you the dashboard name let's type performance testing and then click create so it will create an empty dashboard with the name performance testing here you can edit the name in case you want to make a change once you made the change then click the stick mark to save those changes okay and then you can also add some tags if you want right now there are no tags applied you can also favorite this dashboard when we click the three dots we will have some other options like we can share this dashboard to someone we can subscribe it so the dynatrace will send this as a report to us and we can delete this dashboard or we can even do some further configurations okay so this is the section where we need to place all our visualizations so dynatrace has provided so many visualization options for us which we can use and place them onto our dashboards okay so on the right hand side you can see the different visualizations you can filter it from here by typing the visualization name let's say i want to have a graph then if i type graph it will only show you the visualization so dynatra is calling this as a tile so whatever the visualization that you are placing is a tile okay so we have different tiles available we have graph pie top list single value table and then you can also create some headers and even create a hyperlinks you can use infrastructure related tiles so let's double click on the host help tile that will show this visualization to us so what exactly it is telling us is how how the health of different hosts in our environment when we see all fine that means everything is within the acceptable limits okay since we only have one server monitored in this environment that is why when we click the host health it is only showing that one server information if you have multiple servers then it will show you multiple servers as well if there is any issue with any one particular server then dynatrace will show that in the red color okay in the infrastructure we also have different other metrics like you can also visualize the network matrix or network status let's double click the network status it will show you the network status within this environment so when we select this tile it will show you some additional configuration option that we can use so the title size by default it will show is inherit you can also change it to small medium or large so based on that it will show you the title information so let's see if i change it to small so the title font size has been decreased okay so you can make it as inherit so that it will be common across all the tiles but you still have an option to change the title size based on your need and then we have some filters that we can use if you want to tile filter to override the dashboard settings you can either choose the custom time frame so by default it is using the time frame from this global time frame in case if you don't want to use that global time frame and you want to customize the time frame for this tile you can enable this option and define the time frame that you want okay so even though you have selected 7 days dynatrace will only consider the time frame that you have defined in the tile filters similarly you can also assign this tile to a specific management zone by selecting the custom management zone okay so even though if you select any management zone here dynatrix will not apply that here when you enable this option so you have an option to select globally from here by making the tile as generic or you can make this tile to a specific application or management zone okay same thing you can also select any specific environment by default it will select the local environment if you have multiple environments you can also map this to a specific environment as well so for every tile that you are adding to dashboard will have different kinds of these options okay based on your requirement you can select the appropriate ones once you are done then you can select the done so that will show the dashboard if you want to edit the dashboard again you need to click the edit button where you can again add some more tiles now let's track the services cell so go to the service section and then select the service health so it will show you the services in the entire environment okay for the last 7 days dynatrace has detected 806 services and the health of those services are good okay there are no issues identified okay you can also change this to today then the metric data will be changed okay when you select this tile we will also have different options let's say we will customize this as last 7 days so irrespective of the 
data that you are selecting that will not make any effect to this okay even though we selected today but it is still showing the last seven days data because we override those settings using the custom time frame okay let's disable this so that it will use the global time frame let's add a header so we can see how it looks like so we can type let's bring it here you can drag these things anywhere wherever you like so cpu utilization so this is the header so you can add headers to your tiles so that it will look more informative okay you can also drag this or if you want to edit you can click this pencil that will allow you to edit the text in the header okay now we'll place a graph so let's double click the graph and then drag it and place it here okay so we want a cpu utilization graph so how we will get the graph is you can select the tile and then you can give a name to the tile so cpu and then you can click the configure tile in data explorer so it will take you to the data explorer section so that is the reason i have explained you the data explorer first and then come back to the dashboard so now you can specify the matrix cpu usage and then split by host okay run query and now you can click save changes to dashboard so that will take you back to the dashboard with the data so if i select last seven days then dynatrace will show the data of the cpu utilization for the last seven days so since we only have one host it is showing the one host here so you can add as many tiles as you want based on your requirement okay so whatever the activities that we always do before starting a test like you might be checking the server's health whether they are within the acceptable range environment looks good healthy so you can add all the appropriate tiles in the dashboard so that instead of going each and every screen you can quickly monitor it from here okay you can also add table you can also add a single value let's say we will also use the single value and we'll go to the data explorer let's say cpu usage run query and then save dashboard so based on your requirements you can add different tiles that we have access to in dynatrace once you are done you can click done okay so that will show the dashboard and the different tiles that you have added okay if you want to edit again you can click edit you can add some more tiles and then if you click the three dots it will show different options related to this dashboard okay so you can clone this dashboard here cloning means you are making a copy of this dashboard so instead of doing everything from the scratch you can make some changes and make it ready okay and you can also share this dashboard to other colleagues you can subscribe this so dynatrace will send this as a report and you can also export so when you export this dashboard a json file will be created okay you can share that json file to your colleagues who want to import your dashboard into their environment so they can use that json file to import your dashboard into their environment you can also delete the dashboard and then you can make some configurations so let's click configure so here you can specify some default time frame to the dashboard or default managements or title size when we click the manage action we have a couple of actions so we can publish our dashboard as a preset so that everyone in the environment will have access or we can also share this dashboard okay and then we can apply some dynamic filters to the dashboards and we can see the json of this dashboards when we export dashboard this is the thing will be copied into a file and will be stored in locally you can download this json from here as well okay so if you go back to dashboards now we can see our dashboard as well so earlier we have 10 dashboards now this is the 11th one okay this is the one that we created so you can make it as favorite so that it will always show you on the top so the ones that you use regularly you can make it as a favorite so that you don't need to look for the dashboard right it will always display it in the beginning so this is all about the dashboards so once you have access to rhino address environment the first we always need to do is we need to create the dashboards okay so that we can quickly visualize what is happening within our infrastructure or the application so if you want to delete this dashboard click three dots and then click delete it will ask you the confirmation then select delete so that will remove the dashboard from the environment okay so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you in the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning